Hey little guy, welcome to the world. It's October 4th, 1995. I can't believe you're here already. It seems like yesterday your mother and I were just kids ourselves. It's funny, I'm beginning to think we're all just kids raising kids. But we're itching to get you home nonetheless, so that we can start our new life together with you by our side. We won't have to wait much longer. The doctors just have a couple of tests to do on your mother, and we can take you home tomorrow. Driving home from the hospital, your mother couldn't take her eyes off of you. And to tell you the truth, neither could I. You sat in your car seat so quietly that it was hard not to look back and check on you. But there you were, wiggling around and attempting to blow spit bubbles at your mother. <laughs> what a mess you'll be when you actually start walking. You walked! I can't describe the sense of pride that washed over me when you started to waddle over towards your mother and me. Pretty soon you'll be bumping into furniture and bruising up like a banana. You'll start to learn how the real world will treat you. Ugh, now I even sound like my father. You haven't even started school yet and I'm already trying to give you a lecture. The look on your face this morning when I told you it was time to go to school almost had me in tears. You were so terrified. For a moment I hesitated subjecting you to a public school education and thought about teaching you here in the house myself, but I knew you would make lots of friends. You're as bright and sociable as they come. Your mother told me how much I helped to calm your nerves. She said you looked like you were ready to take on a thousand armies if you had to. It makes me feel like Superman when my embrace can do more for your confidence than words ever could. You're continuing to grow up and take on more responsibilities, like doing those household chores you hate so much. But I always try and take advantage of opportunities to spend quality time. With you in school and my third novel in the works, it's great to just sit down and talk over some Legos. I never get tired of learning and hearing about your ever-changing interests, laughing at your surprisingly clever jokes, and watching you flourish into the young man I always hoped for you to be. A lot has happened since you turned 10. You started crushing on a girl at school. I was surprised that I was the first person you told, but I was glad nonetheless. You usually like to leave the gossip with your mother while I hear about it later. It seems the only time you come to talk to me anymore is for help with your homework or to fix one of your toys. Your teenage years have been pretty quiet so far. You really are becoming the well-behaved and respectful young man your mother and I have raised you to be. I almost wanted to reward you by not giving you the talk. I understand how awkward puberty can be, and discovering who you are and who you want to be is an essential part of growing up. But at least when you do start dating, you'll know how to stay safe. You told me there's a girl in your economics class who you've fallen head over heels for. You told me you thought she might be the one. And I asked you why you thought that, and I'll never forget what you said. You said, Dad, because there's no one else I'd rather spend the rest of my life sharing and enjoying my experiences in this vast world with. I couldn't help but smile. When I met your mother, I felt the exact same way.
I'm finding it harder and harder to believe that you're graduating this year. But to find out that you were accepted into college was sobering. Your mother and I are immensely proud of all your accomplishments, so much so that it'll hurt to see you drive off and out of our lives for four years. But we wish you nothing but the best. The day I thought I would absolutely dread has finally come. You are going off to college to make your own memories and have your own adventures. Somehow I'm not dreading it as much as I thought I would. All these years I was giving you the confidence boost to get through your next challenge. But today the tables were turned. You gave me the confidence boost I needed to see you off. Just like on your first day of kindergarten, you seemed ready to take on the world and the challenges that you no doubt will face. I'm certain that our job in raising you did not go in vain. Dearest Russell, I know you'll never read this, or maybe you will somehow, but I don't mind. This, for me, will be some form of closure after all this time. So much has changed in 18 years. The only thing left unwavering is how much I miss you. It's devastating to us even today that you were never born. I can't begin to imagine what your mother must feel. My heart aches every time you enter my thoughts. There was so much of the world I wanted to share with you. You would have loved it all, and I wish I could have seen how your eyes would have grown wide with amazement when you realized that you are a very small part of a very large universe. I still imagine what your first day of school would be like. I wonder who you would have fallen in love with. I dream of what your future could have been. It's unfair that you were robbed of all those experiences, and there isn't anything I wouldn't do to give you a second chance at the wonderful life you were meant to have. But today, the day I assumed you would leave our nest to start a life of your own at college, I've realized something. You were never really gone from us. I see you every day, in your mother's smile, in the rush of the stream, in the clouds that paint the sky on quiet autumn days such as these. You are around me everywhere and always. Somehow, deep inside, I always knew that. It only took me until now to finally accept it. Maybe now I can begin to help your mother accept it too.